Icarus, my lovely RTX 1070 enabled Icarus, a planetary survival game which has recently expanded to become open world, moving away from its mission based format. Nowadays you can build a permanent community and live in harmony with nature or not. But the reason you're watching this video is to find out if the new open world mode has elevated Icarus from its rather hit and miss early reviews. Well I saw this update and thought hell yeah this is for me so as I've always done when I approach these things let's start from ground zero level zero let's get the true experience and this my friends is my story if you do enjoy consider hitting the like and subscribe button you would be bloody legends it helps me out a lot and if you want to you can jump through to just before 21 minutes to see my final thoughts or keep watching to get more context about the game now I did start off bringing myself down a special bow from the space station I purchased once that was a good starting point. Now in the open world you're going to see a lot of supply pods coming and going I'll explain that later for you but you will have to get used to this. I'm not going to lie I actually really like it it's quite dramatic and I'll explain that later in the video. Don't forget to check out all the different chapters. I've broken this video up into a lot of them. So I started off in the sticks and I chose to start off in the middle of the map in the grass area, the green area. And of course, you've got to start mining and then you've got to start picking your talents and your tech tree. This was all fresh, so I had a lot of things to choose from. And as you'd imagine, you've got to hunt. And when you hunt these creatures, you're going to have to harvest them all just like you do for any of the normal missions. This is open world. I am going to get all my resources around me. Chop the trees down. Hunt more animals. Get those levels. Increase your tech, increase your talents. Chop more trees down. And the early storms that come your way. Well, you can manage those, but night time is pretty dark, so I got my campfire up and running. It gets dark in Icarus. In my first bear encounter, I tried the old method of what we call the river run. Didn't quite work out 100%, but I was pleased to see that it still works. You can swim at the same rate as a bear. And this gives you the opportunity to shoot that big furry, furry creature in the face and you will spend a lot of time using your bow in Icarus. So I started my building. Started on a wood building and it was looking pretty good. And when the storms come in to start with, well, you have to prepare yourself from them. But let's get into it. So a priority in Icarus is always to get your base to stone because the storms will burn it down. Now one of the recent patches have had, or the upgrades have had, tames. Build yourself a bed, build yourself some troughs to feed them and go looking. Now the key questions I was going to answer here is did this feel like my world and was there lots to do? These are the things that really make an open world an open world and ultimately would I come back to Icarus if it was open world. If those questions are answered yes, then it's a good thing. Anyway, I went looking for my first tame and found a mower. And just before I kill it, you gotta understand this is a national icon in New Zealand, an extinct bird, so I shot it in the head and took its young. Yes, in Icarus you can now tame things, you can do this on missions, but in open world I think it's quite useful as well. Brought it back to my base, and as long as you've got your bed down, it will sit down on it, and as long as you've got some food and water in your troughs, you're good to go. 
As I said earlier, important to get your base to a stone level. It was starting to look pretty good. The lightning will burn wood. So stone is very, very important, so you don't have to worry about your structures, and I managed to get that done pretty quick. Then I claimed the ownership and named my mower Lefty. I took them for a ride, and it's pretty good. I like the way they move. they got good running styles. It makes you feel a bit more part of the world when I'm taming a creature from the world. Felt pretty good. I did notice that Lefty had a little bit of a mind of his own. I just took down this wolf. You will be shooting lots of, lots of creatures in the open world game. Lefty definitely did not always do what he was told. It was important to shut him in. But the mowers and the tames give you more mobility on the map, so I use this to go get myself some ice for an ice box. And then it continued the building. Now the mowers and the animals themselves, some of the taming mechanism is fine, but the feeding mechanism doesn't feel quite right. I think they still need to iron that out. But the base was coming along. I wasn't too worried about the lightning strikes, apart from when they hit you. And even then the burning isn't too bad as long as you're not in a wooden base. It doesn't matter that much. And our bodies was made in stars, right? So, so we, we all cooked over billions of years. And we're in this pattern that can think. So suddenly, as the great Carl Sagan said, you have a means by which the universe understands and explores itself, which is us. And as Brian Cox says, we are the means by which the universe explores itself. So using the mower, I went out and got more minerals and more ores, that type of stuff, very useful. And the base was coming along nicely. Get it locked up, good to go. These are a nice addition, very, very nice addition and make the open world feel a lot better. But it is only open world only if you have done the missions and let me explain. So I'm in the middle part there and that's my base. Now I wanted to get to these two big areas. I wanted to get to the desert area, then I wanted to get to that grass area. And the only way to get to those is through some passageways and that requires me to do two missions. The missions will unlock those passages and until then, you can't get to them. So to continue my open world adventure, I had to go back and exit my open world and try and get some of these missions complete. So let me just talk you through these very quickly. The first mission, I'm not gonna lie, uh, this is probably 10 hours of play to take on this polar bear. And you know, it didn't go too well. It took a long time. I tried to do it as quick as I possibly could with a minimal amount of gear. But the missions kind of force you to get a lot of gear. So I had to piss around doing this mission to make sure I got a shotgun going. And this means you've got to spend a lot of time. I'm not in my open world. I've had to exit my open world to do these missions to unlock the passages. It just really took me away from the game. Nice not a good thing. So I jump back uh, into my dropship, go back up, and of course that's one mission done, and now I've got to continue on to the second mission to try and unlock this passageway. And I'm not going to waste your time too much here, but let's just say this was probably another 10 hours of gameplay to get to this point. There was, this was a big mission. And at the end of it, yes, I could drill my way through a wall and open up the passage, and good to go. So the passages are now open, then I can go back to my open world. And I can just take my character straight back to my open world. It's as if they've almost never ever been on these missions. I was trying to get myself a, a lot more gear, get some high tier weapons going. And I discovered that one of the good things the teams are for is in the tunnels because they have almost like night vision. That is awesome. I hope they don't nerf this. This is a really good thing. And there you can see I'd opened up this tunnel finally into the desert area. Now I was having to move myself along quite a bit and try and get better tech, get some good gear going and I was building, spending a lot of time on my base in the world, a lot of time. Bears were a little bit of a problem but I learned the sidestep method and once you've got that going, yeah, they're pretty straightforward. 
I can't underestimate or under sell or over talk, however the hell you say it, how many things you kill. It is hundreds of creatures. Hundreds of creatures, lots of mining, tons of building, going into caves, killing the cave worms over and over again, doing the mining, taking the ores. This is uh, what you do in the open world game. And I'm not going to say it's bad, it's actually quite good because the more you do of this, the more you get invested into the world. Can be a little bit repetitive, but it was quite well done. And the overall mechanic of mining and how it all was done is really good. I get all this stuff back to my concrete furnace and start preparing to get better gear. But of course I wanted to get to another area and then found that was blocked. I was a bit pissed off about this because on the map it looks clearly open to me. But no, it is blocked. That is rather frustration. So I thought I'd have a little look and see if I could do that mission quickly because I wanted to get to that area. 24 hours later. It took me ages. It took me so long to get to this point. And this is right at the end, the final Radar challenge. Supervision. Get closer. I was really hoping for a nice easy mission because I just didn't want to spend any more time. And so far so good. Just taking out wolves, happy days. And then... Yeah, a polar bear turned up and they are tough. I was screwed. We need you close to the scanner, Prospect. Yeah, maybe we won't talk about that. So I jumped back into my open world and that part of the land sticks was never going to be open to me because I couldn't be asked doing that mission. Crocodiles, great addition, love them a lot. They're tough and they move quite well. Now there is something I'd like to talk about and this is what you sort of see here, what happened to me. These crocodiles were chasing me and this bear turned up and let me just say, this is what you call the go to shit fast factor. Icarus does not have enough of this. It feels a bit tame at times. You want these moments of chaos more like this. They don't happen enough in Icarus. The weather, once you get to a certain point, the weather is perfectly manageable and it's up to the creatures to challenge you. And there just isn't enough chaos around you at times to really warrant you giving it too much attention. So... Another thing is make sure you unlock the world bosses trait because once you stay, see the world bosses that it gives you something to aim for. If you don't have this unlocked it all feels a little bit empty, the open world. Next to tame up a buffalo, I tamed myself a mower so let's get some buffaloes going and let's get this base even bigger. Started working on biofuel and all other sorts of stuff because I was really moving into the higher tech stuff now. Don't put glass in your walls. Pointless. And we shouldn't forget how good Icarus looks. It really does look good. On a good machine, Icarus is a beautiful, beautiful game. And you can often spend a lot of time just looking at the landscape because it is simply stunning. And when the weather rolls in, it looks bloody fantastic. But I was having to protect my tames a bit because creatures were becoming a bit of a problem. Stone, although it is tough for the weather, does not necessarily protect you from the monsters. But I set out anyway to take on one of the world bosses, the scorpion. I'd never done this before, so that freaked me the hell out. I almost shat my pants. So with the world bosses unlocked, you can of course, it gives you something to aim for. And this is what you want in these games. You want to have the challenges that you can head for. I often think of Ark as a very, very good example of this. Ark has the ultimate boss that you can try and unlock. And so everyone's always got something to aim for. He's got to avoid getting hit here, Cotton. And also in Ark, one of the other things to remember just while I keep playing this world boss fight is the tames in Ark are really useful. 
Now that's not doesn't just make them useful to have as a functioning part of your game, it also adds value to them. Some of the teams that I had, uh, even though they were pretty cool, they didn't really have much value and they were easily replaceable. You don't want teams to be like. Anyway, I took down that boss. Happy days. And then I wanted to see if I could uh, get a little um, tame convoy going along and I could. Looking cool. Then it was back to mining and this time using the buffalo, which is quite good. It carries a lot of weight. I was pretty happy with that. But bears were a problem as well. They kept turning up and smashing through my stone walls. That became quite routine. The tames as well, the feeding mechanism I quickly mentioned earlier on isn't quite right. I don't like the way you can't feed them without the troughs and a few of mine ended up dying. Now the short range missions were also patched and arrived halfway through this video so the next part is about that. You get a short range radio, stick it down and then you can select different missions and when you select that mission a supply pod or a drop pod comes down. And from that supply pod for this one, I had to pick up a radar and I was going to have to scan an area. Now this is to give you missions without having to leave like I did for those unlock missions. The missions just happen around your base. This one was really quick. Uh, I am going to say that this is a fantastic idea. It is definitely going the right direction. It, they are all a bit too close to my base. I felt like some of these could, things could be bigger, more expansive. This is where it needs to go. But yeah, you do, depending on your mission, have a lot of pods coming backwards and forwards. It, it makes the place feel quite alive. I do quite like it. And the drama of them coming and going is pretty damn good as well. You'll get rewards of various tape types, shapes and sizes and some of them are pretty good and some of them are pretty crap. I found them to be quite well done, the reward system. Some of the stuff they were doing, giving me was pretty useful. Uh, it didn't seem overpowered and some of the missions by taking on this alpha beast they weren't too bad. But this is their first patch, first run of it, uh, the developers, so I think this is definitely moving in the right direction and they could work these up a little bit more. As you can see you get different rewards for different missions. Some of them useful, some of them not so, but that's okay. Uh, for this one I wanted to have some of this anti-poison tonic, so grab that. And then a bear got into my base. And this made me think, well even though having a stone base is cool, you need to go to the next level if you're going to have a permanent base. That led me to requiring a lot more ore so I had to get myself some drills down. And you can see that one of the great things about Icarus is that the bases look really really good. But this quest for more ore did lead me further into my world. I had to go find some of these secret tunnels and mine them. Get some of that copper. Get some of that gold. All the juicy, juicy stuff. And concrete became a key part of my world because I had to get my base defending. I had to fortify it a little bit more. I basically put the whole lower part of my base into concrete and I, I actually think it looks damn good. This looks good. It looks clean and crisp, the lighting, the sharpness, the glass there, the wooden structures, the wooden floors. It looks crisp, it looks sharp. Then I moved on to getting some crop plots going. And as you can see, I was still getting attacked by random creatures but it was taking them longer to get into my base. And they also had these rustic decoration benches where you can sort of put, I guess you call nice rustic touches. Yet again, the building in this looks great and the more you can develop and build your base, if you're really into this stuff, trust me, if you're really into building, Icarus is a damn good game. You can build some nice looking structures. 
Out here we have the nice reinforced rail, a nice table. And then we have a solar panel over there in the distance. It's looking really, really good. Then I moved on to getting myself a water wheel, one of the latest bits of content. And then you can wire that up. Gives you a bit more power. But also, it just looks really nice, doesn't it? Get these uh, different electrical components going, get some lights going, get all sorts of stuff going. And also one of the things I like about Icarus is the different suits of armor or clothing you can get there is a lot of them they look really really good and this isn't all of them there is more there's polar bear armor there's composite armor and i think there was one more type i just couldn't be bothered showing them all here now my final thoughts the Icarus team, they do updates every week, so it makes it hard to do videos, but that's okay, because at the very last moment, they released wooden fortifications and new missions, sort of resolving some of the problems I was just talking about in this video, and that's some really, really good stuff there. So good fortifications and more missions, and I'm really pleased about that stuff. And this was just one of the worm bosses that I took on as well. So what do i think icarus is definitely headed in the right direction i can see that and with the weekly updates it's moving quite rapidly i think they're finally finding their feet and it feels a much more solid game now they need to scrap some of these unlocked missions to keep the immersion keep you in that world make it open world guys i was starting to feel like i had settled this world and that is good there was plenty to do, but some of the stuff had a bit pointless, and I will return, and Icarus may yet pull off a no man's sky. If you don't know what that means, look it up. Thanks for watching, see you in the next chapter.